So, uh, I haven't made a video in a couple of days, um, but uh, there's one thing that I have noticed over the past couple of uh, uh, a couple of days that I've been kind of decompressing from, and uh, you know I've been continually taking in the data, but I haven't really sorted it out in terms of you know making a video about it but I have it all in my head and um, it's actually a very interesting uh, thing because it, you know I wasn't even gonna make a video today but it turns out I wasn't the only one that was having the, uh, the thoughts and uh, believe it or not actually uh, Peter Schiff talked about this in his podcast and uh, he was talking about how border walls are nice and everything, but it it attributes to uh, extra power to government. And the problem with government having the power of, you know, basically keeping us from leaving a terrible situation um, you know, that is, um, you know, that's not good, especially when you have a state like California, which is pushing essentially socialism, and you have, you know, people like Ocasio-Cortez who are pushing this Green New Deal, um, and you also have, um, you know, a lot of people that are backing Ocasio-Cortez because they see her as like this new wave of, you know, political jockeying or political uh, figures in um, U.S. politics. Now, I don't think that that is anywhere near being true, but, um, you know... What do I know, right? I'm just some crackpot conspiracy theorist. Um, now, going back to the border situation, right? You have uh, a lot of the video that you see coming out talking about how you know, the migrant caravan, and blah, blah, blah. It showed specifically, like, on Twitter and other places, video of people coming in from Tijuana. And Tijuana is, you know, South California, basically, like, the most southern part of California. And the thing that kills me is you have that being a border that is being highly uh, publicized. And you can say, well, it's because California has the biggest problem as far as illegal immigrants coming in and, you know, using our... Um, welfare system and everything like that um, and they're not paying taxes blah 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 you can say all that but the fact of the matter is when there is a recession and if history is any testament to um, what is coming down the pike if you will uh, there is another one coming, and I have a feeling it's going to be in 2020. Now, can Donald Trump win the presidency without California? Um, yeah. Of course he can. He did it last time. Why wouldn't he be able to do it again? But, the number one thing that... Um, is at least what I've been noticing is this stress on 
border security and um, you know you even have like this article that I saw uh, a couple days back let's see this was um, on Sunday and it states um, dozens of US Air Force let me get this over here move some stuff around dozens of US Air Force warplanes have hit the skies in mass under cover of night over the American Southwest for the joint forcible entry exercise December 8th uh, reported the drive the large-scale uh, scale air mobility exercise simulated forcible entry capabilities by the US Air Force of en of enemy territory with dozens of transport planes fighter jets and electronic warfare aircraft the first report of massive military mobilization came from a social media account called a Chandler Cody who allegedly shows video of 26 Lockheed C-130 Hercules performing or preparing for takeoff in an, at an undeclosed location at 8.47 p.m. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so that was supposedly the video. Um, okay. About 38 minutes later, civil military air reported 17 C-130s over Texas headed for a region near the Area 51 Air Base in Lincoln County, Nevada. Um, according to one Twitter user, there could have been as many as 38 warplanes participating in the JFEX. Um, At this time last year, social media was flooded with videos of lights flying up in the night sky as strings of C-17s and C-130s crossed the U.S. on their way primarily to the Nellis Test Training Range in desolate southern Nevada. This unique large force employment exercise is among the most complex drills the U.S. Air Force executes and it combines assets of all types including fighters, surveillance aircraft, electronic warfare platforms and throngs of ground troops and equipment that are dropped into or dropped off in simulated em enemy territory. So why would they do this on the border of Nevada? Well Obviously, this would be, uh, you know, either patrolling or, uh, you know, it basically just looks like some kind of blockade, you know, to keep people from leaving California. And, I mean, if you look at California, we're basically sitting ducks. I mean, you talk about the largest population in the United States you know, every other state in the U.S. pales in comparison to our population. So, I mean, it's just interesting because you have, you know, military exercises on the border of Nevada and California. And then you have, you know, the media specifically targeting... Um, 
you know, Tijuana, which is at the southern border. And then you have, and I, there was an article that I read talking about how Canada supposedly turned over the uh, the border, um, the control of their borders to the UN, right? So the UN controls the essentially controls the Canadian border with the U.S. So I mean, it's just weird. It, it's like it's like California has become like this maximum security prison um but not in the sense like like if i wanted to go to nevada i could but in the case of some kind of you know military action or martial law or something it's like it would be in total lockdown mode in an instant and that is essentially what you know peter schiff was talking about in his podcast I don't know if it was today or one of his podcasts. Excuse me. He goes on to talk about how if, you know, the government builds the wall, the southern wall, you know, you're not just locking out people from Mexico. You're locking in people from the United States. And uh, he was talking about how, you know, if you have a socialistic society, people vote with their feet. You know, they go, they leave, they go somewhere else. The problem is the United States is the only place you get to go. Europe is a hellhole. Uh, the UK is a hellhole. Uh, excuse me. Um, the Middle East is a hellhole, and Canada is a socialist fucking nightmare, and Mexico is run by the cartels. And when you step back and you look at the rest of the world, you know, it makes you feel a lot better about being $22 trillion in debt, but at the same time... You know, you have to take into consideration that the entire world is on fire right now. And I'm not talking about global warming. I'm talking about straight up, like, it's kind of fucked up. But not in fucked up in a way like the Iraq war fucked up. I mean, like, the whole world is in complete and total chaos. And uh, the people, uh, the, you know, the people that want civilized society are rising up. If you look at the yellow vests, uh, you know, protests in France. They've leaked into other parts of the European Union. You know, that's causing some problems, especially with, uh, you know, world leaders, multinational leaders mostly, because they don't want to relinquish that power. Um, but it's going to happen no matter what. And when the power gets relinquished back to someone who actually gives a shit about regular working people, I think you will have a better chance of, you know, living in a prosperous society. They, especially Europe... When I say they, I mean people of the world are not um, doing so well, if you will. I went in to a Taco Bell today, okay? And I was actually, I was like, you know what, I don't even feel like, I, like I forgot my lunch and I was like, you know, I'm just going to go in. I'm going to go through the drive through and uh, I'm just going to grab some shit and fucking whatever, you know. I just wanted to get get lunch over with. And so I go and I, I'm like, wow, you know, there's like 10 people in this line. And I don't really feel like waiting. So I like, I, I go over and I park my my car. I get out and I go inside. And there was no one in there. There was no one inside, and the people that were working in there, okay, 
there was one guy working at like i guess making the food and there was two people running back and forth between the window and taking orders you know and, do, and doing all this stuff and they're you know they're working their ass off and they're they're busting out order after order okay i go in there and i see these two kiosks and i'm like okay this is kind of weird you know I, I walk up to the kiosk i go oh shit I, you know i can order from this so i'm like well shit you know i don't want to bother these people they're working their ass off so i I, wa I walk up to the kiosk and i order my stuff and then, you know i i realize i said oh print a receipt no i don't need a receipt I'll, you know i'll send it to my email or whatever i didn't even have to talk to anyone or do anything i literally i just went up i put in what i wanted i paid i went and i sat down and you know the one of the people in there that was getting ready to go like sweep the floors probably for like the 10th time that day um you know brought me my food and i i guess initially i set it up to where you know i would was gonna go to go and then i was like you know what i'm gonna sit in here and i'm gonna eat my lunch and then i'm gonna leave so i sat in there in an empty taco bell with 10 people at the drive through and it was like the most limited interaction with humans that I've ever had in my entire life and I grew up with technology so it's something that I'm very used to I'm very used to you know as a young teenager or whatever to sit there and you know either play video games for hours on end or uh you know with no human interaction or being in your your house or your apartment and, and being alone for hours on end and not having any kind of human interaction but going into this taco bell in in ordering food and then having one person bring it to me while all the other people are focused on busting out drive through orders it was the most it was just it was bizarre it was the weirdest feeling i think i've ever had in my entire life that emptiness of you know the the human interaction so it just seems like every day there and i don't i hate to be this you know this drag or this pessimistic kind of guy but um from my perspective from a logical perspective there is um there's a lot going on in the world but there's also a lot going on um in the in the united states in this country this country that i live this country that i'm sure a lot of you live but the the problem with you know the viewpoint of the united states is this great nation and and doing all these great things and is and is amazing and the most wealthy country in the world or whatever you want to say whatever Donald Trump wants to say or excuse me whatever you know anybody else wants to say about how America is great don't get me wrong things there are certain aspects I think culturally America is doing great I think that there is uh, more dialogue now than there has ever been before which I think will help immensely but there's also too many um, there's too many people 
who I think don't understand um, what is going to happen in the near future, whether it be financially, uh, you know, either financially or um, socially w when it comes to uh, war and when it comes to, um, you know, even like the food supply. One of the craziest things I had ever seen, I went to the store and I bought blueberries. And I thought to myself, wow, these blueberries look amazing. So I looked at the package and I was like, wow, these blueberries are from Argentina. Why are these blueberries in America from Argentina? Now, don't get me wrong. If Argentina has a better price for blueberries, why wouldn't you buy blueberries from Argentina? But the problem is they were $5 for like almost barely any. There was like a small package of blueberries. Now, I don't know what the, the, um, like the uh, nutrient value of a pack of blueberries is, but I don't think that it's worth $5 when you probably get the same nutrient value from a multivitamin which gives you everything you need in a 50-day supply for $22 or whatever it is. So it just seemed kind of weird that, okay, yeah, blueberries are accessible in the United States. Okay, I'm not complaining, right? First world problems. I'm not complaining that blueberries are expensive, okay? What I'm complaining about is why is nobody in the United States creating enough blueberries for the demand that we have to go and buy blueberries from another country? And who knows? Maybe the blueberries don't grow properly in the United States, and therefore we cannot get them or grow them. So we have to go somewhere else. Just another reason why, you know, everything looks great on the surface. But what happens if we lock out everybody in, this, in Southern America and, you know, we no longer get blueberries? What else is there out there that, you know has a California label on it that really, you know, from some southern country. What if this, you know, the food supply becomes, you know, practically nothing? Especially here in California. If an earthquake happens, the distribution of you know, basically the entire uh, oceanic side of the United area of the uh, California, you know, the left side of uh, I-5 there, the main freeway that goes up and down California, is all going to be totally wrecked. You know, there's going to be a lot of uh, disruption of commerce. Even in Washington and Oregon and probably Utah and Nevada. All that stuff gets trucked in from southern uh, parts of the United States. So just a lot of stuff to consider when you're looking at um, you know what's going on. You have Military training exercise that obviously goes on all the time. And you have a caravan coming up from, you know, Southern America on the southern border of California, specifically as uh, portrayed by the media. And you have 
Zero Hedge, you know, with this article talking about, um, you know, this uh, military exercise, which, by the way, it looks like mostly cargo. So maybe it's, you know, a rescue mission. Maybe the military knows something that's going to happen in California. Maybe something drastic is about to happen in California. You know? There's a lot of talk about the weather changing to the extent that, you know, the increase in galactic cosmic rays from reduced solar activity is going to cause a major earthquake or even a volcano causing global cooling, which in turn reduces the um, supply of food, which causes problems. Okay? What do you think happened in China to where they had to build the Great Wall to keep people out? Well, it was a food shortage. Every four to five hundred years, which is a dynasty, the empire collapses. When were we incepted? 200 years. Okay? Who's to say that we weren't incepted, you know, in the middle of those, of a period of a dynasty? Okay? I'm not saying that, you know, every 200 years there's some kind of catastrophic event, which there may as well be. In uh, 1812, there was a massive volcano that went off. There have been volcanoes periodically every 70 to 100 to 200 years that have been very detrimental to the growing patterns and everything else, temperatures and so on and so forth. Are we going into another one of those periods? I don't know. But it just seems weird that California is becoming more and more like a little China and that the United States just seems like it's continuing on the trajectory that it was even under Obama. There are some social things that were reversed, but the downward trend continues. And that's what I don't like. I'm not saying that, you know, it... I'm not complaining that, you know, it's not perfect. What I'm complaining about is the fact that, you know, Donald Trump claims all these things and that he's going to do all these things or, uh, you know, it just seems like we're just getting strung along and strung along and strung along. And 2019 and 2020 is going to be one of those you know, periods in time where uh, everything just seems strange. You think things are strange now? Wait until 2019, okay? Specifically, summer of 2019, okay? That is when all hell is going to break loose. I know the most of this episode has essentially been me ranting about stuff. But the most important point that I want you guys to take away from this is just because borders keep people out doesn't mean that they can't keep people in. Or I should say border walls. And that's one thing that you need to take into consideration when you are supporting uh, somebody 
like Donald Trump. Okay, a lot of people look up to him. Um, I can honestly say, so far, he has been a exceptional president. But you have to watch out when you're dealing with the salesman. The American dream, the idea of the American dream was like a sales pitch, okay? It only works if you believe. I believe that you or anyone else can do great. You can do good for yourself and for others as long as you want it. But only if you do it. Donald Trump is one of those people who does what he says he's going to do. The only problem is there are still a lot of things that he said he was going to do and he has not done them. So, like I said, 2019 and 2020 are going to be very interesting years because he may or may not be reelected in 2020. And if that's the case, he's going to have to jam pack he's going to have a jam-packed fun-filled adventure here in the 2019-2020 stretch. And it all depends on the economy, it all depends on the central banking and um you know whether our economy crashes first or the European Union dissolves or uh, you know, maybe China's economy crashes uh, from all the shadow banking they're doing over there. Maybe Deutsche Bank, you know, defaults on everything and uh, sends the euro tumbling, which would send the dollar through the roof, which was then, uh, you know, weaken uh, the uh, European markets and the euro. And the yuan and everything else, the ruble would go tumbling. If the European Union dissolved, the less competition uh, means money would flow out of um, you know European markets and, and probably into the U.S. market. But it's all speculation, and right now, it just things aren't looking very good. And I'm from California, and you know, I don't believe in a lot of the stuff that the people of my state do. As you all know, the people in my state, I'm not going to name names, we all know who they are. They're foolish. And it pisses me off, man. There's nothing. A little peon like myself can do about it except for complain to you guys on the internet. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'll see you in the next one.